both to the most perfect location for large volumes of junk. Yes! Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> this salvage yard is the perfect spot to acquire some robust defensive materials. Could barbed wire go through a tire? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And to find some offensive weaponry. Oh, it's a pitching machine. I think I just found my non-lethal weapon. Oh. Ooh, I found this really cool skeet shooter. Perfect. I want this. I don't know what I want it for, but I want it. Ah, oh. outstanding. <laughs> now the challenge feels real. Three days of building and testing to convert our bits and bobs and vehicles into suitable war rigs ready for a duel in the desert. You guys feel ready? <laughs> yeah, I found some good stuff. Let's get post-apocalyptic. Ooh. Three cars enter, one car leaves. <laughs> the Mad Maxian devotees of the End of the World Wasteland Festival have filled me up with apocalyptic inspiration. Keep coming, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> now, two of my favorite makers and I are building battle cars from scavenged parts for a showdown in the desert. Stop! Oh. A post-apocalyptic <laughs> fantasy is the most pure form of in-situ resource utilization. You can only build with the things that you have at hand. That is both the terror and also secretly the promise of the apocalypse. We need some targets on the cars and some way of determining who wins. How many targets are you thinking? I was thinking three. Three Rule is good. Threes. Yeah, that's good. The structure of this contest is pretty simple. Three builders, three cars, three days to modify those cars, and each car is loaded with three targets. Two low targets on either side of the front bumpers and one much harder to reach target mounted high on the roof. So each contestant has to take out both of their other opponents to be the last builder standing. So we're not killing each other? We no. are, no. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. I cannot imagine two better opponents to bring into this contest than Simone and Laura. I found some cash to help with the budget. Each of them is an amazing builder, engineer, designer, but they also come up with ideas that would have never occurred to me. Oh. My name is Simone Yach. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm an inventor, kind of. I make videos about the things I build. I've mostly been making useless machines, like an alarm clock that slaps me in the face, or like a robot that tries to serve me soup. <laughs> Simone is such a delightful seat of the pants engineer. Oh yeah. She really understands what it is to just start packing away and seeing what works. Just clear up a lot of space for the build, taking out everything that we don't need before we start filling it with things that we actually need. <laughs> My name is Laura Kampf, I'm from Cologne, Germany, and I make weekly videos about building stuff. It could be anything. It could be a boat motor, it could be a bicycle modification, or furniture, or the tiny house that I'm living in. It's, it's all over the place. Laura is a very methodical maker. She has this aesthetic that brings out the joy in making. And she's also a wonderful engineer. I have a rough idea, a rough feeling for where I want this to go. And my first step is to mess this car up. Wow, that looks ugly. <laughs> Laura's plan is to build a post-apocalyptic police cruiser fight car with a battering ram grill. I started by cutting holes in the hood. This lighting ball shape will be a design element that I will repeat for the windows and everywhere in the car. 
I love it to see stuff that has no value. It was on a junkyard, it's supposed to go into the trash. And then you add more trash to it, and somehow it's like alchemy. Put it together and there is value. Yeah, I like it. Helping us realize our dystopian visions are our three shop builders. Marcos Ramirez is working with Simone, <laughs> while John Marcou Thanks. is with Laura. It could literally place down and sheet metal screw into the hood. Okay. Jen Schachter is helping me get my concept car off of the page and into reality. For my design, I'm gonna emulate one of the unsung beasts of the desert, the mighty warthog, complete with angry tusks and a fearsome mohawk. My offensive weapon of choice, that pitching machine I found in the junkyard. In order to aim and fire in any direction, I'm going to build a swivel mount to the roof of my car that I can operate from below like a periscope. Yeah. Uh. All right. <laughs> like this? Whoa! Bum, 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 bum. In your face, apocalypse! <laughs> now what's the one thing that no self-respecting post-apocalyptic car owner should do without? Armor. That piece of steel diamond plate that we found sets the whole aggressiveness of the car. It makes the design. This is my new battle-improved grill. I think I can take out uh, pretty much anything with this. Cows, snow, and Adam and Simone. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, Laura, you are like intimidating me. <laughs> this is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk away. Our builds are shaping up. At this point, Laura seems to be focused on brute force. I'm concentrating on my targeting system to give my warthog the edge I need, and Simone's plan, well, Simone's plan is just not that clear yet. It's end of day one. I'm trying my best not to look over at Adam and Laura, what they're doing, because I feel like they've added a lot of things and I've mostly just taken away a lot of things. I don't even know what we're gonna come up with.